Hey, how you doing, everybody? Calling all sponsors, calling all brands. If you need to promote anything, anywhere, please uh, reach out to me. I have space on this podcast to insert ads and do my own um, brand promotions and everything, brand reviews and everything. So if you need anything promoted, if you need um, a channel where you can promote your brand or or, or promote your, uh, your content or you need promotion for your merchandise, whatever it is that you're selling out there, let me know. Reach out to me. Email me. Um, this is Guy Concept. And that's how we're going to start the episode. I'm, I'm looking for more brands to start sponsoring. So if you got a, if you, if you want me to shoot an ad in, into my um, into my podcast, just let me know. I can place an ad. This podcast is available everywhere. Um, it's on all platforms officially right now. So um, now what I'm trying to do is, you know, outreach to more brands, more marketing people. So that way they could get their merchandise here. They can get their you know, promote their merchandise, promote whatever it is they need to promote here. So, yeah, um, this podcast is available everywhere, so I can do a great job of getting your merchandise, getting your message, getting your brand, getting your um, services, whatever it is that you do. I can do a great job of promoting that for you and getting that out to the to the public because podcast is everywhere. It's on Audible, it's on iHeart. It's on Apple, it's on Google, it's on anywhere you stream a podcast at. It's there. So, yeah, I wanted to start off with that. And um, thank you for joining me. This is God Concept Podcast. Um, My background always got something to do with the topic at hand. And today the topic is how the mob and the CIA, you know, um, coincides with each other, how they work together. Now, I'm saying this because this is just, you know, my series and what I'm doing. And at the same time, um, the the CIA does use the mob or mafia, um, you know, figures to actually do certain things that they can't do, that they don't want their name attached to or whatever. They, they use them to, to fund whatever mission or, or accomplishment that they trying to get, you know, done. Now, they'll do things to citizens. They'll do things to you in your regular life um, to promote whatever it is that they're trying to do to, 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 to promote their agenda. Whether they want, um, whether that be guns, whether that be drugs, they'll steal guns from you. They'll put drugs in your hand shit they'll give you guns and everything they'll they'll uh give you money and they'll do a lot of things in your family life that'll fuck your life up my life has been affected by these practices that the cia and the mafia do you know what i mean and they was trying to set me up you know not even trying to set me up they successfully set me up i'm gonna go ahead and say that they successfully set me up but I haven't felt any repercussions from their setup, from their actions. I haven't felt any repercussions yet, except the repercussions that happened in my life, in my personal life, that took effect on my family, my mother, my grandmother. The CIA and the mob always had a hold on my family. They had a hold on my grandmother. They placed handlers in her life. I'm, I'm, I'm discovering. They had a hold on my mother where they follow her around, place handlers in her life, had her thinking that she could be out in the streets dealing drugs and things like this. And they also handled my life in many ways. This thing really goes across the board and they shouldn't, they shouldn't get away with this type of crap. Not in 2024. They've been doing it for a long time. And here we're going to dive into all of that. In 1948, the streets of every major city in America saw a huge and sudden rise in heroin supply. Harry Anslinger was the commissioner of federal narcotics, and he wanted answers. A confidential informant drops a bombshell. The man bringing in the heroin is the head of the mafia's national crime syndicate, Lucky Luciano. That was a surprise. The mob didn't deal drugs, but maybe things changed. 
Anslinger sent agents to Sicily, where they caught Luciano preparing a half-ton shipment of heroin heading to New York City by way of Havana. Now, the U.S. government didn't have jurisdiction in Sicily, so they brought in the local police. They refused to make an arrest. Anslinger called the State Just Department listen. for help. After a few transfers, his call is finally connected to the U.S. Embassy in Palermo. Mm. A young man picks up the phone and says, Sorry, Commissioner, have your agent stand down. Lucky's with us. Anslinger was confused. He asks, what do you mean, us? The response was the last thing Harry Anslinger expected to hear. Lucky Luciano, one of the world's most notorious crime bosses, was working for the CIA. And that's what I'm talking about. That's what this, that's what all this whole discussion is about, because this is what they do. You know what I mean? This is just common practice for them. The CIA and the mafia have always been working hand to hand together. You know what I mean? The scan of Picos. Why do you think they could um, have real estate business, but at the same time have people that's on document working with work, uh, uh, running guns, running drugs? Not only that, manufacturing drugs and things like that. Not only that, working with motorcycle clubs and everything like this. They're documented. The people that was in my life, that was fucking with my life personally, is on documents of having... Uh, police records, you know what I mean? Um, arrest reports, um, their own documents being uh, narcotic cookers, narcotic distributors, their own record um, of being gun runners and things like this. I had no knowledge of this. But yet and still, these people get to run the streets. Yet and still, the CIA and the FBI, I never contacted the CIA, but I kind of did by fucking with them. But at the same time, when I contact the FBI to try to get relief for my situation that they put me in, right, for their own reasons, for their own goals, for their own agendas, right, I get no help at all. And I'm still struggling and I'm still trying to get out of the hole of what they did to my family. I don't give a fuck how powerful you is. I'm never going to give up on this tirade. I'm never going to give up and just say, you know, I'm going to just move on with my life. What? Do America think that a person could go through that and then just go and continue to do their regular schedule program, go get a job and start working again? Why? So I can go out here and y'all can try to take me out so that way this message don't get across to people. So that way I can't never let my truth be heard. I don't know what the fuck you thinking. I don't know what the fuck you thinking. I knew all along something was going on. I knew all along that I was dealing with something that I was unable to control, but I still had to pursue it because these people has been fucking with my family for so long. So I started running my own investigation and doing my own, on, on my own due diligence and discovering a lot of things. This is what these people do. This is just what they do. And to be honest with you, they'll let you be the fall guy so this way they don't have to get their hands dirty. This way they don't have to answer because they really don't want to answer to you. They really don't want to, they don't ever want to be seen in a bad light. They don't want to be seen in a bad light. They don't want you to, they don't want you to ever get the best of them. They don't want you to ever get the best of them. After World War II, Europe was divided. The Western allies controlled West Germany. Let's continue to listen. East. As former allies became enemies, the Cold War began. The Soviet Union suffered massive losses liberating countries as it marched to Berlin. And those liberated countries, they weren't giving them back. Poland, Hungary, Romania, Bulgaria, they They'll never give it back. satellite states. And the Soviets wanted more. How much more, nobody knew. Europe was in ruins, but the Russian army was still strong. If they pushed west, they would be hard to stop. The Allies needed a plan to contain the Soviets. So they turned to Alan Dulles of the CIA, America's new intelligence agency. It's sad that people expect During us to war, pay taxes to strategic services or the fuck OSS, us over in this way and run secret missions all around operations. Alan Dulles was the OSS station chief in Switzerland. He watched the Soviet Union closely and he didn't trust them. They may be temporary allies, but they were communists. Dulles believed in using every tool available to fight communism. A radical plan to stop Soviet expansion landed on his desk. 
It focused on training small groups of citizen soldiers in sabotage, supply raids, propaganda, and guerrilla warfare. That's all they do to us nowadays. All of this happens nowadays. Even if their governments fell. All of this happened nowadays. The White House loved the idea. The only question was, who would lead this secret army? Alan Dulles had the answer. Nazis. Oh, great. What could possibly go wrong? It's sad, man. It's sad that they can get away with that type of shit. And they do it right up under our nose, and we don't pay nothing. Intelligence program no, we look at it as conspiracy. Engineers and technicians. It's not conspiracy. This shit is real life. This shit actually happened. Many have been implicated in war crimes and human rights abuses, but the U.S. looked the other way. They commit war crimes against us all the time, and we never get any type of retribution. We never get any type of justice for the shit they do to us. They're not trying to give me justice for the shit they've been doing to me for a long time and my family. Then when you find out, put the information... When you find out and you put the information out there, they still act like you don't know what the fuck you're talking about and still don't rectify you. Dr. Eric Trau was a top Nazi bioweapons designer. After the war, he worked for the U.S. Army and helped launch the Germ Warfare Lab on Plum Island in New York. And what happened there was bad. How is a Plum Island link down in a place here with all this stuff? You know, Rudolf, Walter Dornberger, and Werner von Braun developed the V-2 rocket that killed thousands of people in London. That's actually what's going on now with the drugs and shit like that, with the COVID. It's a germ war going on right now. And I miss this is a germ war going on. They later worked for NASA and built rockets that never went to the moon. <laughs> Fake moon landing like down here too, by the way. About 1,600 Nazi scientists... We're listening to wi fi A lot of them are connected to war crimes and unethical experiments but their backgrounds were sanitized to avoid public backlash. Yes, Nazis were evil, but to the Americans, they were a necessary evil used to prevent Soviet expansion. General Reinhard Gellin... That's what they do. They get the most heinous people, expunge their record, and act like these motherfuckers are saints, and put them in office, put them in charge of your city, put them in charge of your law, law enforcement, and all that type of shit. The worst things you do, the better you look to America for some reason. The better you look to this government. Why is that? They're so busy crossing the lines. You know what I mean? They're crossing politics, law, and things like that with crime and, 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 and corruption. The CIA was a organization. It wasn't armed or militarized. It only It's fucked up. And it's always been like that in America. America is ran on corruption. That's all it is. It was more than just for intelligence gathering. They control you through the secret organizations and all that shit. It's a big, big thing. Gellin's first recruits were Hitler Youth and former Nazi soldiers. He called them werewolves. They were ordinary mm. citizens by day and communist killers by night. Mm. And that term... See, a lot of what I'm hearing, I'm associating with the Scandipicos. Because a lot of terms that I've heard and a lot of terms that was used around me is coming to light. And I'm seeing why they use these terms and why they do certain things the way they do them. At one point, she admitted to me that they was the CIA, but it was like a whisper, says CIA. Hey, what the fuck is that about? What you mean? This was horrifying news. The new German government ordered a full investigation. They do this for your property. They do this to steal your energy, your time, your property, your grandparents' property, whether it's a house, whether it's a car, whether whatever it is they want. They steal things from you. They'll set you up because I believe they wanted me to crash out or something. They wanted to use me to look like I was some type of um, 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 gun dealer or some shit like that. This is what they tried to do. This is the this is what the propaganda they tried to put on me. This 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 is the the type of character they wanted to put on. This was and then when they didn't get that, they wanted to turn me into some, um, like, domestic terrorist. Like, I was going to go, you know, do some crazy shit. This is what they told their office people in order for them to let them, give, give them the green light to fuck with my life and my family's life. Named for the gladius, the sword used by Roman soldiers. 
recruits would be trained by U.S. and British special forces. This is what they do. All the tools and tactics needed to fight communism in Italy. The CIA just needed one last thing to get Gladio running. A lot of cocaine. Okay. CIA and cocaine go synonymous. They go hand in hand. That's why I got this picture up here. See the background? The background always got something to do with the message of the, the day. The CIA would use Operation Gladio to create fear and instability in Italy. They would spread propaganda, infiltrate political events, bribe police, politicians, and disrupt demonstrations. Mm -hmm. They had to convince citizens that the Italian Communist Party was a dangerous threat. Bribe the police. They are the police. Was made with Italian military intelligence. They get they, all this shit. All this shit. When the cops came here and arrested me before, they locked me up for something not even pertaining to, 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 to what they came here for. And then on top of that, they said they was going to come down and interview me for the problem that I'm talking about now. Never came. And those were detectives from the Eastern, Di uh, Eastern District Detectives of, uh, of Philadelphia. And I know for, for, for certain that they're in the pocket of the mafia. I know for certain they're in the pocket of the mafia. He worked with the Chinese National Army fighting Mao Zedong's communists. These people are horrible. They'll give you a record just to make you look like you're wrong and build up some case against you. So they don't ever have to fix the problems that they cause. So they don't ever have to answer for the, for the heinous shit that they do in people's lives. And it's deeper than that because it goes down to a spiritual thing as well. They did. The planes joined the CIA's secret fleet the, infamous the CIA foot the bill for all this shit. For all this shit. They'll give them money. They'll give them what they need to create drugs. They'll give them drugs if they need it. They'll give them guns. They'll give them targets. They'll give them you. They'll serve you up on a silver fucking platter if you're going to fit an agenda for them. If you're going to help Biden push his, um, 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 push his agenda of taking the Second Amendment away from, from people because we live in the city of the first class. It was organized. When you know something, when you know something, and, and, and you know how to do certain things, you got to keep it a secret. You can't take photos, you can't post videos and things like that, because that was my mistake. I was posting up YouTube videos of me fixing guns and building guns and this and that. But I never did it and never sold a ghost gun and nothing like that. But they look at that as me having certain abilities or knowledge and shit like that, so they attack me. If you look on my YouTube channel now, I got a bunch of gun videos on there where I build guns, I'm reviewing guns, I'm explaining certain things about firearms and, and how to protect yourself and different weapons like that. There's nothing wrong with doing that. But they use that to paint a picture of me. You see what I mean? And they use the people in my community, neighbors, my own grandfather, all of that shit to paint me out to be a bad guy and to keep putting a stigma on my name and who I am. Hey, guess it is Why are you so upset? It's fucked up, man. This is what they do. You were an organized. This is just what they do. We prefer the term family business. Thank you very much. This wasn't even supposed to be my podcast today. I was supposed to be doing a subject on something else because the nine eleven victims, right? They families. They we found they found out that America the whole time knew that nine eleven was gonna happen. And they want they want answers. They want to be justified. You know, they want they want people to come to justice. But they didn't sell drugs. It was considered dishonorable. But when the CIA came calling, Lucky Luciano made an exception. The money was just too big. They made him an offer he couldn't refuse. Right. Besides, they always make an offer that you can't refuse. Either. Commies are bad for family business. They are. Couldn't refuse. And perhaps. Good idea. So when the CIA needed to move heroin, they knew who to call. Listen. Lucky Luciano and his mafia syndicate. Yes, I did. At the time, the mafia avoided drugs. Well, they used heroin to keep prostitutes in line. But they didn't sell drugs. It was considered dishonorable. But when the CIA came calling, Lucky Luciano made an exception. The money was just too big. They made him an offer See? he couldn't refuse. Right. See? Besides so who's the, the real mafia? The mob or the CIA? The commies are bad for family business. They are. And they use drugs to keep people Organized in line. I'm not going to lie. In a communist state. I've abused drugs before. Yeah, I, did, I did drugs before. The whole thing is, that's how they get you. They get you with this. They get you with that. They, because it's not you becoming addicted to it. cans, wheels of cheese, and barrels of olive oil. Jimmy Hoffa and the Teamsters moved the drugs around the country. The Teamsters, the unions. 
ton of cash. You hear this? The unions is the ones that move this shit around. Was good business. They use legal businesses to push their agendas, to push their drugs, and to push this and do this, all the dumb shit that they do, and to watch you and to monitor and have you under their thumb. Financial institution. But walking into a bank with millions in cash sets off a red flag or two. They needed a bank that could handle cash without scrutiny from U.S. Treasury agents, Italian bank examiners, or the international monitors. Only one bank on the planet could do this. The Vatican. The Vatican. The Vatican of all fucking banks. The Vatican. So that goes to show you that they tied in with your the religions Institute and everything. The religion or Vatican Bank was founded in 1942 to safeguard property for religious work or for charity. It only accepts deposits from top church officials. Mm. Five cardinals oversee transactions and report to the Pope. And that's all we know. It's the most secret bank in the world. Exactly. Ran by the Knights of the Templar. Because they they into all of the different organizations. All the different, the Masonics, the Masons, the Eastern Stars, the Knights of the Templars are the, are the head of that shit. You know, there is something suspicious. It's all about control. It's all about power. It's all about corruption. Come, swim with me, human. Swim with me and open that It's bigger than you know, man. It's bigger than you think. They harvest your blood. They harvest your energy. They harvest your time. It's subject to international law. It doesn't report to any agency or government, only to the Pope. It was perfect for laundering drug money. And of course, the church would get a cut. Yeah, the family business, everybody wets their peak. The Vatican was familiar with black sad, in the United States. The church helped the OSS create rat lines. Shit sad. And I never signed up for this shit. Plus the church you understand? I never signed up for this shit. So whatever they got going on, it should have never even involved me. Whatever they had going on with my family, with these people, with those people, I never signed on for that shit. I never gave my stamp of approval. They used me as a fucking guinea pig for a long fucking time. And I never even knew it. create fear of a communist takeover. Communism would bring violence, economic collapse, and the loss of religious freedoms. It worked. The Communist Party was defeated. The CIA was thrilled. They were able to change the outcome of a sovereign country's democratic election. They didn't have to use the secret Gladio army. But what good is an army if you don't use it? So the CIA sent word to the Gladio soldiers, prepare for war. It would take a few years to organize, but Gladio was finally ready to enter its second phase. Mm. Terrorism. Terrorism. This is what they do. Domestic terrorism. They terrorize you all the time, and you don't even know it. You don't even know Italian it. Italian politics stabilized briefly, but the Cold War intensified, and Italy was on the front line. The Italian Communist Party, though defeated, remained a force. Violence was coming. It's just sad, man. It's just sad that they get away with this shit because we don't even pay them any mind. But it's going to be a civil war. It's going to be an uprising. It's going to be unrest amongst the people. I'm not resting until I get justice for this shit. I'm not resting for the shit that they do to our families and our, and our freedom and our justice. I still haven't got no answers. Still haven't got no answers. I mailed out federal tort claims letters to all these motherfuckers, to the, to the Department of Justice. I am mailed out federal tort claims letters to everybody, to the Masons, to the Eastern Stars. I'm mailing out federal tort claims letters because I want them to know that I'm serious, that I'm adamant on getting fucking, you know what I mean? Getting not only exonerated, but also getting my shit back. Getting what they owe me. Getting my time in the Supreme Court so I can sue they fucking ass. They deserve to be brought to justice. They deserve to be in jail. They deserve to They deserve to be in a position that they put us in all the time. Getting us locked up. Getting the extorting us. Stealing from us. Using us to meet their agenda. To meet their goals. They deserve to be in jail. Under the same scrutiny that they put us under. But they'll never get that. They they print out fake fake records for them and everything. So that way, when they dealing with you out there, they dealing with street people. That when you look them up, they can look like they oh they about their life because they got a record. They got they got book. They got records of them being in jail and shit. They don't ever see no time. 
They don't see no time. All they do is get a slap on the wrist. They get talked to. They get debriefed. And then they get to go somewhere else and continue doing the same fucked up shit that they do here. Pecorelli thought Italian intelligence might have aided the Red Brigade. She told me that she got a lot of people in America that love her. Like, a lot of people all over the country that, that, that love her. And she go anywhere and shit like that. It's because this is what she do. She sit up there, fuck, suck, and set up niggas all the time. Still, still they weapons, still they property, still, you know, have people dealing drugs and shit like that. She the plug, basically. And there it is. I don't give a fuck about the plug, because I ain't never need no plug. I ain't never been a bad person. I ain't never been in this type of life. But this is what you do to a man. They got a family. This is what you do to a, a family. To my grandmother, to my... Fuck Alonzo Brown, because he's a part of y'all shit. He was the fucking handler. Fuck him. You did this to my mother. You ultimately did this to me. I was a child, man. I was a child when y'all was fucking with my mom. But few arrests were made. His breakthrough came when Vincenzo Vinciguerra confessed to the petty auto bombing. He said his group was... It's a petty fucking place that we live in. This is a petty fucking place we live in. And y'all full of shit. You're all criminals up in that office. You know what I mean? You're all fucking criminals. And the people that's hiding it, you're complicit. You're complicit. Whether that's the mayor, whether that's the governor... Whether that's the police chief, whomever it is, if you know about these things and you know about these practices, you need to get people out of office. And not only out of office, they need to be held accountable for the things that they do in our everyday life. They shouldn't be allowed to get away with this type of shit. Sir, we can't tell you over the phone. It's supposed to be land of the free, home of the brave. Who is really free? And who is the bravest among me? This is bravery. Bringing this shit to y'all. Bringing this type of news to y'all. Bring this type of information to y'all. This is bravery. You know the shit I had to deal with? You know the scrutiny they, the, the scrutiny they put me under? You understand the things that they could do to your mind, to your body, to your soul, to your life, to your family's life? Even more shocking, it wasn't just by pushing their agenda, by trying to get what they want to get. Because what if I would have crashed out? What if I decide to go down there and shoot up the fucking scan of Pico real estate building or one of them fucking buildings or whatever? What if I decided to go to the FBI and do some nut shit at the FBI building? Or I know where the CIA building at. They, they call it the Penn Career Center. What if I would decide to go there and do some nut shit or something to those people in that building? That would be me crashing out. That would be me uh, uh, promoting their agenda, right? Because they don't want you to have, they don't want you to own firearms at all. They do want you to own them, but they don't want you to own them. So when, when, when something shifts, when, when, you, when the view is shifting, right? When it looks like they're against the Second Amendment, they'll give you more Second Amendment freedom. Because they just allow open carry in New Orleans, right? So they give you that freedom, but somewhere else adjacent, they'll have something in place to try to take the Second Amendment freedoms away. They give an inch, and they take an inch. That's how it goes every time. These people is full of the fucking con game, man. They invented the con game. They invented He was acquitted for lack of evidence and cleared of all charges. Yeah, he had friends in high places, eh? He did. He was important to the cause. Andriotti oversaw Operation Gladio in Italy. About 30 acts of violence were directly linked to Gladio, with 150 more suspected... Around 600 innocent people died from Gladio bombs, with twice as many injured. If all suspected attacks are proven to be Gladio-related, the death toll is in the thousands. No one has answered for these crimes. Over the years, as more innocent bodies piled up, the CIA said it needed more money and power. Communism was taking root all over Sad. the world, so they got more money and power. The agency became militarized. It now had its own secret army that it could deploy anywhere there was a Soviet threat small problem it was all a lie all a lie damn how the fuck it's propaganda it's the rhetoric 1950s through the 1980s the ussr was an existential threat it's the values the around that coin that they hold so dead near and dead to their heart the values of that coin that they hold near and dead to their heart is what they want to control in the 1960s america the grammar the rhetoric the propaganda, 
They control the music. They control the entertainment. They control every aspect. The way you work, when you work out. Yuri Gagarin went to space. Your mathematics, what you believe is law. They control all that shit. They they put themselves in the place of God. They put themselves in the place of the creator. Because they play God. They created this this image of God that you see today. But there's a creator over top of that. And they interfere with your natural connection, your innate connection, your spiritual connection with the creator. They interfere in that. It's sad, man. Requiring a full retaliatory response upon the Soviet Union. Clearly war with the Soviet Union was coming. More military spending was needed. But was it? The CIA said yes. I grew up in the 1980s when military budgets exploded. Generation Xers like me believed that war was going to break out at any second. Yeah. We were in an arms this race is what they that we do. couldn't afford to lose. It was a race for survival. But was it? The CIA's job is to gather intelligence so the U.S. government can make informed decisions. Okay. Somehow these decisions always led to... That's all they do, is gather information, find out more about you, and they implement the shit that they want to do to you. Because all it is is information. So everything that you see on this phone, on these televisions, on this phone, all of, all that shit is propaganda rhetoric, right? And then the things you put on your phone, when you take your pictures, when you take your photos, when you take your videos, when you text messaging, you're making your personal calls, the things that you watch, the things that you're digesting through your eyes, there's more information about who you are. only way to stop Soviet world domination. In reality, 1964 started 20 years of the Soviet era of stagnation, not domination. Their economy was falling apart. The CIA didn't know. Yes, in the 1960s, the they know, because they'll do the same thing to you. They'll take your livelihood away to force you or nudge you to do exactly what they want you to do. The state-run system was failing. Productivity was low. Their technology was outdated. There's no incentives for innovation. The same thing they did to Cuba, too, that they continue to do to Cuba. The other half of my people. This is the same thing they do in Cuba with the, with the Havana um, syndrome and all that shit. With the active denial the system, was glasnost, which means openness. The yeah, all that shit is real. With the active denial system, with the Havana syndrome and all that shit, they, they just call it something different in different countries. The they, against Soviet aggression wasn't a strategy; it was a sales pitch. They want to keep their foot on the necks of anybody who's not with their operation, and at the same time, they'll have you be a part of their operation without you even knowing. Without you even knowing you're a part of their little scheme and their little plots, their little conquests on, on world domination. It's like Pinky and the Brain. The Brain knew exactly what was going on, but Pinky was always just the, you know what I mean, the, the front man. The one that he get do, to do all his bit, but Brain knew exactly what it was about. It was all about world domination. of the Soviet Union. Pinky and the Brain. There was no Soviet Union. The Baltic states left. Ukraine, Belarus, the Central Asian republics, they were on their way out. The CIA didn't know. In 1991, the USSR was officially dissolved. How did the U.S. respond to its greatest enemy being defeated? It increased its military spending by 12%. Why? The Cold War was over. The Soviets lost. But I guess the CIA didn't know. They knew about everything. They know every time. Every time, because they got a foothold in everything. Everybody, when something happened, they don't even got to get a call. They already know Operation what's happening. Gladio was real, but it's still they got all this shit tapped. Classified. The they hear this podcast, right? They hear the, 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 the information in this podcast before it even get released. They won't tell us. The CIA can't confirm as soon as I the upload it to export it, they already get it. Operations. I guarantee it. <laughs> Hecklefish is hilarious. The CIA on here. claims it was never involved in drug trafficking. They admit Air America existed for intelligence Ooh, gathering and transporting supplies. <laughs> yeah, supplies are smack. Smack? Yeah, you know, skag, horse, brown sugar, China white. Heroin. What'd I say? It's smack right, though. The CIA said it never happened. In 1996, journalist Gary Webb linked the CIA to Nicaraguan Contras trafficking cocaine into the U.S. to fund rebels. Yeah, it sounds familiar. Doesn't it? Did the CIA put drugs into black community? We don't have any evidence so far that they did it directly. What we have evidence of is that men working for a CIA-run army did do that. 
See? Did they put drugs? Look at Rick Ross. The real Rick Ross. Look at what he went through. An official 1998 report. They put some drugs in his hand. They don't people put some drugs in our in our community. Don't people got people overdosing. Those people got people going to jail for the rest of their fucking life over these drugs and shit that they want to put about because they finance their own shit with it. And it's not even about the money. these activities. It's about having having that control, having that power. That's the shadow government. investigated themselves. Yep. That's the shadow government, the ones that run the streets, the ones that the ones that run the community, the ones that run the streets. Those are the ones that the shadow government. Your secret organizations and the little meetings they hold to control and manipulate communities, people in the community. You tell us that you're going to investigate yourself. You got to be crazy. Whistleblowers, including federal agents, sad man, and we just let this shit happen. People ignore a person that's sitting up there bringing this information to the forefront. People ignore the fact that all of this shit is going on with a person, and they know it's going on, and they know it's happening. They know exactly what's going on and what's happening, and they just all on some hush hush shit. States of America, well, they in cooperation with the CIA. That's what. That's exactly what appears. Mm. Declassified documents show the U.S. government, including CIA, associated with known drug traffickers. They overlook these activities to stop communism. Yep. <laughs> if you were to question, uh, they overlook the all CIA the bad shit that the, that the people work for them do. The black neighborhoods of Los Angeles to finance the contra war, the answer will be a categorical no. Now, having said that, and what is true is. The policymakers absolutely close their eyes to the criminal behavior of our allies and supporters in that war. You hear that? The they close their eyes. That means they turn a blind, a blind eye to all the contributions of 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 any any criminal element that helps them. The CIA didn't admit to working with organized this crime. Way you, this is what they did with them fucking scan of Picos. This is what they did when I put all the evidence online. They turned a blind eye the to the injustice that was done to me. Any financial arrangement. Because these but people work with them. Direct evidence of Vatican support for anti-communist activities, but no hard proof. Yeah, that's why they use that bank. And it's a spiritual connection. What's the truth? We don't know. It's a spiritual all connection and everything. my opinion. I know we you got people popping up becoming pastors and shit like that that have been drug addicts all their fucking lives to my family. This episode is Wait, about the how? We've been told for I got cousins that sent me demonic fucking uh, uh, Instagram photos and shit, Instagram messages and shit like that. I got Facebook um, instant messages from them where I'm asking them to just leave me the fuck alone. Where I'm, you know, where they got people from jail. Um, sending me messages. I'm trying to protect. Powerful, they'll undermine democracy and influence policy sad, to man. their own financial interests. I can tell it. That's what happened. CIA operations like overthrowing governments concerned Eisenhower. He knew intelligence agencies were necessary, but stressed the need for transparency and oversight. Otherwise, the agencies would become a law unto themselves. I can nailed it again. When are they going to be held accountable for this shit? Is when I want to know. When are they going to? When are they going to stop having rain and do this type of shit to people? To regular people living their life. When are they going to have? When are they going to not have that type of control over? To overthrow Cuba's government, the Bay of Pigs invasion was a disaster. The CIA botched it. It embarrassed America and solidified the relationship between Cuba and the Soviet Union. James and they kidnapped people. Believe that maybe the they kidnapped children from Cuba. Harm than good and needed to be reformed. Operation or Peter Pan or Pedro Pan. Their growing power they kidnapped children from My father was one of the children that they kidnapped from Cuba. During the 1960s, there was another serious threat to democracy, organized crime. This is about your energy. It's about the your spirit. Labor unions and important businesses. They could buy judges, influence politicians. They were powerful enough to change the outcome of elections. Some say mm. the mafia helped JFK get elected, mm. which would be ironic because JFK's victory brought the mafia a big problem. His brother Robert, as Attorney General, RFK prioritized. It's sad, man, because they control so much, and it's all about the control. And people don't realize America is a big ass experiment for them. America is is the one place where they control you with corruption and make it look legal. 
was assassinated five years That's why I say it's, 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 it's legalized, organized crime. That's exactly what America is. All it is is a system run by legal, organized crime. It's a legal, organized crime syndicate going on in America. And all of us are subject to it. killed. A potential president on a crusade against the mafia, killed. Now, we know the official stories. JFK, Lee Harvey Oswald, a lone gunman, case closed. RFK, Sirhan Sirhan, lone gunman, case closed. But there are other theories with real evidence that place the blame not on lone gunmen, but on two powerful organizations. Mm. Two organizations with the motive, opportunity, and means. Who? The CIA and the mafia. Exactly. Whether the CIA and the mafia were right involved in the assassinations, I'm not sure. But I'm sure of one thing. They've both mastered organized crime. Yeah. Legal organized crime. They legalize the organized crime. Because the they're doing it. And we're all victims of it. Man, you know, they do it with your churches. They do it with your communities. All this shit. That's all it's about. Legal organized crime, man. You know, that's it's fucked up. And they'll they'll keep they'll keep playing that role and they'll keep doing these things until people fucking wake up. You know what I mean? It's gonna take a lot for us to come back from some shit like this. You know what I mean? It's taking a lot for me personally to come back come back from some shit like this. Because what I'm dealing with as one person, right? I don't know who's helping me behind the scenes, right? But at the same time, it's like I'm one person noticing this with the help of other people doing their own investigations and putting their own work out there, like the Wi Files guy right here. He's beautiful. I, I, I listen to him a lot. I get a lot of information from his podcast and things like that, and other podcasts as well, and other videos that I find on the internet and different information and things like that. It's like, man, we all got to wake up and see that the systems that we think are legal and the systems that we think that are bringing us justice, the systems that we think are here to protect us are really not. They're really here to hurt us. You know what I mean? If, if, if you're a person that can meet their agenda or help them meet their quota in any type of way, they'll screw you over. They'll screw over your family for generations. They'll fuck up generation upon generation upon generation of your people just so they can continue to, to run and organize and operate that criminal syndicate. You know, they, they could call it legal all they want. The FBI, the CIA, the mafia, your local law enforcement, and all of them are tied in with that shit. They'll set your life up to the point where they'll do things to make it seem like you're a criminal when you're really not. That's why I say anybody out here who's spewing that mob shit, who's who's promoting the mafia and shit like that, man, you're promoting the destruction of your own fucking people. You're, you're promoting the destruction of your own communities and things like that. And you're promoting them when in fact, when they see no more, no need for you anymore, when they... When they don't feel like, you know what I mean, like they need you anymore, all they're going to do is discard you, put some information out there about you, put some type of slander on your fucking name, put some type of dirt on your record or whatever. So this way you get locked up, thrown in jail, killed, or the community hates you, get your own people to start hating you and shit like that. It's what they do. You're expendable. Anybody out here that's, that don't got one of their badges or is not one of the, in, in, into their La Costa Nostra, into their legal uh, criminal organization that they got popping, that they've been had popping. If you're not a person of influence and power in their eyes, then you're expendable. If you're an artist out here and you're supporting that type of shit, you're expendable to them. If you're a business owner and you're supporting that type of shit, you're expendable to them. If you're not actually one of that mules, one of the people that's actually putting all these pieces in play for them, you're expendable for them. You're expendable. If your bloodline isn't the bloodline of who started this shit, because it's all about, it's a family business for them. It's a family business for them. For you, 
is money, is fame, is an opportunity. But for them, it's business as usual. It's a status quo that they're, that they're putting about. You know what I mean? It's a status quo for them. They just trying to keep things running as usual, business running as usual. That's all it's about. You know what I mean? Some of us come out on the winning side of that, and some of us come out on the losing side of that. Me, I'm always one to take lemons and make lemonade. So you put me in a bad position, I'm only going to fight and strive to make my position better. Not just for me, but for my children. But how hard do you got to fight when you're fighting against legal, organized crime? Organized crime that's made to look legal. How hard you got to fight against a system that's corrupt, that's more corrupt than you could ever be because you don't got those same influences. You don't got that same amount of power. You don't got the drugs, the money, and the bitches and all that type of shit because that's all, that's all the public want to see. They like to see a person win the illegal way. And that's what they do. They promote to you exactly what they are. They like to see you win the illegal way. They want to see you win with the guns, the drugs, the violence and shit like that. And then once you promote that, once you got the all the salacious shit in your videos and in your music or in your books or on your TV and things like that, then they'll let you win. Because those are the things that they project. You're merely seeing the things that they project. You are an image of what you're a part of. So when you see and when you're when you're uh, you know when you're idolizing and when you're so um, like starstruck by certain people, that's that's showing you money, drugs, violence, sex, and all that shit, the cars and all that shit. And that's because that's what they promote. You're, sen they, you're sensationalizing. You're intrigued by the things that they promote. If you lived in a society that wasn't ruled by the uh, organization that project that type of thing, then you wouldn't find that shit funny. You know what I mean? Some countries don't find money, guns, drugs, violence, and 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 over over sexuality and shit like that. They don't find that shit amusing. They don't find it funny. Some places don't allow that shit on their TV. They don't allow their children to be subject to that type of message or that type of rhetoric. But here in America, so easily we do. Because the ones that run America is the ones that's projecting this, this stereotype. When they're projecting homosexuality and things like that. That's because they want you to be a fucked up people. They don't want you to, man, listen, to each his own. Anyway. That's been my episode of God Concept, man. And, um, you know, you just got to stay aware, stay in tune with yourself, stay in tune with your family. You know what I mean? Are we really free? Be what you want to be. Are you really free? No, because it's sad. If you appreciate the content, please like, share, and subscribe. Also, like I said at the beginning of this video, I'm looking for sponsors. I'm looking for brands that need commercial space on a podcast that's reaching everywhere. My podcast is available on all streaming platforms. So if you're a brand, if you're a supporter, anybody who needs commercial space on a podcast that can get the message across so I can do some reviews for you, so I could, you know, we could do a little give and, give and take there. You know what I mean? Um, please reach out to me. My email is humsadroid at gmail.com. Um, this is God Concept. And yeah, more is to come. More is coming on the way. More books, more music, more podcasts, more great messages to help wake y'all up. With the help of, you know what I mean, adjacent podcasts as well. Um, I find that the format is better when I'm doing it this way. It's less of me having to guess or have to rethink what I'm thinking about. So it's like, it's like having somebody there without having somebody there to support 
my views and what's true and what's what I'm trying to get across to everybody, to my viewers. So, you know, if you like the format, if you like the new format, comment, let me know your thoughts. And please like, share, and subscribe. Whether you comment something good or something bad or whatever, I just appreciate the input. You know, so there you go. This has been another episode of God Concept. I'm your host, Mr. Pagan. Over and out. Peace.